Today's project, we're going to upgrade the onboard air system on my 66 tandem truck. The truck has six airbags on it, so of course it has an air system to support that. Uh, right now it has a belt-driven York air conditioning compressor that I've converted to compressed air instead, and it feeds two aluminum air tanks underneath the cab. That system works well, but that York puts quite a bit of oil into a uh, separator that I have between the compressor and the tanks underneath. That bothers me a little bit. It puts out way more oil than I expected it to. So I'm going to upgrade a little bit. I'm going to leave the York on the truck. It's quiet. It works really well other than the oil. I'm going to put in a secondary system. I'm going to put in an electric 12 volt compressor as well to use as my primary air source. And then I've still got the York as a conversation piece because it's kind of neat. And as a backup, uh, you know, with the airbag system, you don't want to be stranded someplace and not be able to put air in your airbags. So I'll have redundant air systems on my truck. For the electric compressor, I've opted to go with this Napa air compressor. Uh, there's a lot of information on these out on the internet. Uh, it's a twin cylinder unit. This thing is rated to put out 10.6 CFM of air. Now that is at zero flow, but that's the displacement of the cylinders. That's a lot of, of airflow. Uh, the York that's on my truck, it puts out a lot too. You know, most of the electric compressors are in the one to two CFM kind of a range because they're, a lot of them will be a single piston rather than a twin. And uh, you know, one to two CFM, it's pretty typical. 10 CFM is ridiculous. Uh, the York that's on my truck, if I recall, it is a, a York 209, which is rated at 8.69 CFM at zero PSI. Again, that's a lot more air than you can get out of a typical electric air compressor. So in the end, I should have a 10 CFM unit and a 8 CFM unit, both redundant systems. I could even run a bucket at the same time if I chose okay, to. On this Napa unit, uh, I picked this thing up for 150 bucks, 149.99. It's a pretty good deal, you know, for uh, bang for the buck. This is probably the most CFM you'll get out of an air compressor. It's rated to about 150 PSI max, uh, which the pressure switches I have in my tanks right now, that's what I operate the York at is 150 PSI. The Napa unit is actually the same as a lot of the big name electric uh, compressors in the off-road world. Uh, I'm not gonna throw out names, but if you do some searches on this, you'll find that a lot of the big name companies are starting with this compressor, they very likely are making a couple of minor adjustments to it to make it a little bit better, but they're still starting with the same basic compressor. 150 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. This particular compressor, it came with uh, an eighth inch MPT fitting to a quite a bit of hose, but it, it, it has a quick connect on it, but it is not a standard quick connect. It's some oddball kind of thing that's not gonna fit anything else that you have. And a lot of people will take that 1 8 inch MPT fitting and if they modify this compressor, they will drill out the header, the tube that goes from cylinder to cylinder to the output. They'll drill it out and tap it to a quarter inch MPT because this 1 8 inch MPT has a very small hole in it and they claim that is a big bottleneck in the airflow from this compressor that you get considerably more flow, easier flow. Uh, by drilling out to a quarter inch. So I have done that. I'm not going to show you how because there's a lot of information out there on YouTube on how to make this modification. So I've drilled it out to a quarter inch MPT and then I came to a, a connection where I can take an air tube over to my compressor or over to the air tanks and I also put a uh, pressure switch on this so that it can uh, uh, run up to 150 PSI and shut off when I get to max pressure. Uh, I wired this out to a pigtail. pigtail. Uh, I will take this up to a switch on the dash to turn the compressor on and off. And all I did for that, the compressor had a on off toggle switch on it itself. I simply took the two wires off of that toggle switch and ran. I'm going to run it up to a switch on the dash. So all I'm doing is moving the location of that switch. Also, the uh, battery cables for this compressor, it came with some little dinky uh, cable with uh, alligator clips to connect to your battery. I'm going to mount this unit permanent rather than use it as a portable unit. 
And people say that these wires are undersized. Uh, when they uh, run the compressor to fill up tires, like on an off-road rig, like a Jeep or something, uh, they say these cables get really, really hot. So a lot of people will cut these cables short and they will go to uh, at least a four gauge cable to run to the batteries. So I've done the same thing. Uh, I've marked my positive lead because they're both black. So I put a red heat shrink on my positive. The other one will go to, to ground. I already have some uh, battery cable that I'll use to do that with. Uh, a lot of people will buy a 20 foot uh, jumper cables from Amazon for like 20 bucks. And they'll use that cable to do this. They'll cut the ends off of it or cut one end off of it in order to upgrade the size of these cables. And I think that's it. I think it's pretty much all I did. So next thing, I'm just gonna mount this in my truck to the side of the frame rail. I'm also gonna go one step further. Most people do not do this for uh, their onboard air systems for airbags. I already have a separator, a uh, water oil separator on my York setup to keep the oil out of my air tanks and out of my airbags. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this setup as well. Uh, I found in the York, in addition to the oil, I get a lot of water in that separator as well. I don't want that water in my air tanks or in my airbags. Uh, sure, you could drain your tanks from time to time because that's where most of the moisture will end up. For 30 bucks, you can get another separator. So I'm gonna run this compressor to a separator mounted uh, underneath the rear fender where I can access it to drain it from time to time. It's just an extra little piece of insurance to try to keep moisture out of my system. If you're new to the channel, you're not familiar with my truck, this is my 66 Chevy C10 tandem axle. I built this truck over the last, Lord, I think it's probably 18 years I started this truck. It's always at the very bottom of my list. So I'm just going to do a very quick overview of this truck for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Uh, the truck was given to me. It was a basket case when I got it. So I've done 100% uh, of the work on this truck myself. Uh, it's had rust repair on every panel on the truck. Uh, these are the original fenders. I cut them in half and stretched them 33 inches. I just put a, a new steel panel in the middle of them to make a longer fender. Uh, I actually dropped the step one inch just to make it look a little bit better. I built the bed from scratch. Uh, it's all 18 gauge sheet metal with a piece of round tubing down the edge to create the roll. Uh, the floor is a sheet of 14 gauge, uh, brand new tailgate. Uh, the rear cross member underneath the tailgate is new. All the rest of it is uh, hand fabricated. I think those are 39 Ford tail lights. Inside's coming along. I've still got a lot more to do. I've still got door panels and glove box and stuff like that, but it's coming along. The truck is drivable now. I've put a few miles on it, you know, working out a few of the kinks, but it works really well. It is on six airbags. It has six wheel disc brakes. LED headlights. I can get the hood open here. It is a four bolt main 350, backed up by a 700 R4. And we'll look underneath and I'll show you uh, how the drivetrain works. Both the tandem axles do work. They are both driven. This is my air supply for my York. So this is my York compressor. If I remember right, that's a York 209. Uh, I could look at the tag on it there, but I'm not going to bother. So it comes out of the York to my separator. And I put a quick connect here so I can plug in shop air to fill up my tanks if I want. Or I can plug in an air hose here and you know fill up somebody's tires or I can plug in an impact wrench if I want to and then it goes down to my air tanks underneath Really neat setup. This little trick here. is just uh, two quick connect fittings screwed together and that allows me to plug in my shop air here in the garage and fill up the tanks very quickly and for brakes real quick uh, those are Wilwood master cylinders that gives me enough master cylinder to push three pairs of disc brakes. Uh, so both of these reservoirs push uh, the rear axles. So four disc brakes back there. This is the rear axle, this is the front axle, and then this one does the front disc brakes. Okay, real quick, look underneath the truck. Uh, front frame rails are sunk five inches down into the front cross member. Uh, stock spindle, stock control arms. Uh, I did put a Silverado steering rack in it, and I've got a video on how I did that. I did not use a kit. That's all 
home fabricated to make that work. Goes to the 350 turbo. There's my latest and hopefully last exhaust arrangement. Uh, there's two aluminum air tanks. I want to say these are five gallons each. I don't recall, so quite a bit of air capacity. Then I'm into a divorced NP205 transfer case that feeds a pair of nine inch Ford axles. Uh, the axles are three linked with a triangulated upper link and I do have the six wheel disc brakes. So that's pretty much how this truck operates. Okay, let's get back to today's project. All right, here we are at work, getting ready to head home. Uh, all the compressors are in and wired up. You can see my tank pressure, zero PSI. So we're gonna fire it up now and see how long this uh, Napa electric compressor takes to uh, get up to, we'll try to go to 150 PSI. We'll see how it goes. Sitting out here in the hot sun all day long, carburetors are empty. Okay, here we go. Okay, so pretty interesting test so far. Uh, one more test to go. So far we've tested the Napa electric compressor. At low PSI, it does really well. Uh, at higher PSI, the York does better. I wanna try both compressors together, both the York and the Napa at the same time, just for kicks and see how it does. Uh, I did do that test. Uh, I did not film it. I was driving through a, a kind of congested area, 15, 20 miles per hour. So I wasn't at full cruise RPM. I was probably 12 to 1500 RPM most of the time, kind of on average. So given that the York is belt driven from the engine, and of course at higher cruise speeds, say 1500 to 2000 engine RPM, uh, that York's gonna put out even more. Uh, I'm kind of new to this tech thing I'm, it's not my thing that the tech with the video editing and with the phone so i'm going to go back to the old tried and true method and uh, we're going to use cardboard to see how all these different options compare okay i'm not real good at, at technology so we're going to use the old uh, sharpie and cardboard method to compare these okay so the napa compressor 
Now remember, I was filling up 10 gallons of air tank. Most people with airbag system will run a single three gallon tank or a single five gallon tank. I've got two five gallon tanks, so 10 gallons of capacity, that's a lot to ask out of a compressor. So with that in mind, the Napa electric compressor took 33 seconds to go to 50 PSI. The York took 38 seconds. Kind of surprising to me that the York did a little bit worse. Uh, combined, took 13 seconds to get to 50 PSI. To get to 100 PSI, the Napa took a minute and 36. The York took a minute and 34, so starting to gain ground. Combined, 36 seconds. We're at 100 PSI with both compressors operating. 125, it took two minutes and 41 seconds for the electric compressor. The York did it in two minutes and six seconds. Combined, 51 seconds. We're at 125 PSI with both compressors operating. Okay, now to 145 PSI. The Napa took four minutes to get from zero to 145 PSI. The York did it two and a half minutes, 231. Combined, we put 10 gallons of air up to 145 PSI in one minute and six seconds. And remember, that was at 15, 20 miles an hour. So my engine RPM was in the 1200, 1500 RPM. I wasn't much over idle. At cruise RPM, you could be the full pressure from empty tanks in well under one minute. That's crazy.